What's up, everyone? Well, the official beginning of spring is at the spring equinox, which is just about a week away from when I am filming this video. And so to ring in the spring, we are going to be talking today about some different types of fertilizers. So all three fertilizers that I have here are what I would call mineral or salt-based fertilizers. These are generally created from mined and refined minerals that are then uh, mixed together in proportions to uh, allow for proper feeding of most plant species. Now there is a plethora of different types of fertilizer on the market. and. and they all fall basically into two categories, which is organic and, and salt-based. And then there's like a few that blend the two things together. These are all mineral or salt-based fertilizers. If you want to check out some of the organic fertilizers, look at this other video. But we're gonna talk about these guys today. So let's start with this Dynagro Foliage Pro. Now, Dynagro is a Bay Area company. It was started a couple of decades ago and it was primarily aimed at the cannabis industry. So it's a little bit pricier than something like miracle Grow that you can pick up at a home center. It also uh, claims to be a little bit more gentle on plants. Some of the things uh, that can happen when you use salt-based fertilizers is that they can actually cause margin burn in sensitive species. So junipers are not sensitive to salt burn and neither are most pine species and quite a few others, but things like Japanese maples or trident maples and a significant number of plants, usually deciduous plants, are sensitive to margin burn. So uh, Dynagro claims that their products don't cause that kind of burn because they don't contain urea. We do sell this on bonsify.com if you wanna pick up a bottle, but basically um, when I've told people to use this, there's a lot of different instructions on here. And so it says directions for use, hydroponic production, use two to three teaspoons per gallon, maintenance, mix one quarter teaspoon foliage pro per gallon, production, siphon mixer, foliar spray, to correct mineral def deficiencies. So it's not telling you like for a bonsai, put this you know on at this rate, but you can kind of get an idea now Whenever you're using a salt-based fertilizer, it's really important to follow the dilution directions on the label. And that's because if you just dump this onto your plant, you're most likely going to cause a reversal of the osmosis system that allows uh, plants to take up water into the roots. And essentially you're causing root burn, which is going to do a lot more damage than good. So always read the labels. In this case, I would go for, let's see, it says one quarter teaspoon per gallon, and then this one says one teaspoon per gallon. So there's a lot of different information here, but I'm gonna start off by doing about halfway between the maintenance and the production. So production being essentially, if you're thinking about cannabis, something where you're trying to drive, uh, drive fast growth. So if you were applying this to a seedling or young plants, you might want to apply it at a higher concentration. So I'm gonna take a half teaspoon uh, and pour out the liquid that is in here into a half teaspoon and dilute that into a one gallon container. Now, if you don't wanna use a one gallon container, uh, for example, if you wanna use a small watering can like this, uh, this is one of the watering cans that we sell on bonsify.com. The, the, I measured the volume of this, it's about 800 milliliters or a little bit less than one quart. And that means that if I put a quarter teaspoon of uh, this concentrate into this each time I mix it, I'm essentially doing one teaspoon per gallon. And so that is at the top end of the range. So I can put one quarter teaspoon into this one quart uh, watering can and that will give me the label dilution. And then all I really need to do is water it into the tree, just like that. miracle Grow is essentially the same thing as Dynagro, except that rather than coming in liquid form, it comes in a solid crystalline form. 
and there's always these plastic packages inside the box, which you can then pull uh, apart one end and use a little scoop to pull out the concentrated fertilizer. The coloration is there just to allow you to know that you've added it. So if I have a quart of water here and I put a quarter teaspoon of these crystals in, they will then, well, it, once you stir it around, color the water so that you know that you're applying the fertilizer to your plants and you don't forget that it it's already has fertilizer in it if you get interrupted while you're trying to do it. So in essence, uh, miracle Grow is a concentrated fertilizer. Let's see here, it's 24% nitrogen, all of these numbers. So 24, 8, 16, all of these numbers basically uh, listed just like in organic fertilizers are the percentage by weight of this product that is that element. So 24% of what is in this bag is available nitrogen 20.5% urea nitrogen and 3.5% uh, ammoniacal nitrogen. So it's important to, once again, look at the directions on here. There's some directions for using with a watering can in this case, or with a miracle Grow garden feeder. Make sure that when you are following these directions that you are using all the components that they specify. So this is saying, mix one and quarter teaspoon, the small end of the enclosed scoop, per one half gallon of water every two weeks. So I've actually done uh, twice that concentration in this water. So I would wanna maybe use it at a little bit more dilute concentration than that. If you want a way to double check the dilution of your salt-based fertilizer, I recommend that you pick up a TDS meter. TDS stands for total dissolved solids. And this measures the electrical conductivity of your solution of fertilizer and water. The more salt that is in a, a container of water, the more electrical conductivity there is. So this is basically converting that electrical conductivity to parts per million. When I measure my straight tap water here, I get about 90 parts per million. And when I measure this tap water that I added a quarter teaspoon to a quart of water, of uh, miracle Grow, I get 750 parts per million. Subtracting 90 from that, 660 uh, parts per million of miracle Grow is gonna be a little bit strong. You probably shouldn't go above about 500 parts per million with fertilizer and 300 parts per million is safer for a wider range of plants and conditions. And third, we have Osmocote. Now, if you're not already familiar with it, uh, in the U.S. at least, this is the same thing in essence as the other two, but uh, it's been put into granular form. And so it is a polymer coated granular form of fertilizer, but it contains the exact same type of mineral crystals that are in miracle Grow. It's just that when you apply it to your plant and it says, uh, on the instructions here to add a cap full per two gallon container. So I'm estimating this is about a gallon, but I wanna be conservative just in case I wanna use other types of fertilizers. I tend to use Osmocote as a backup fertilizer. Essentially, if you put a little bit of Osmocote on, not the full dose, and then you regularly fertilize with other types of fertilizer, you're not relying exclusively on this. The package says that it's supposed to last six months, and so you would just apply a few of the, the little pebbles and kind of mix them in with the topsoil of the plant. Now, depending on the size of your container, if you have a much shallower container, you might be putting on just a little bit of this stuff. But the, the way this works is that when it gets wet, the water goes through the membrane, and then as it dries, the pores that the water goes through exude a, just a tiny little bit of the minerals uh, that are inside each time it gets wet and then dries off. So the first time it gets wet, it doesn't actually release any fertilizer. And then the next time it gets wet, there's a little bit of fertilizer on the outside of the pellet that gets washed off when it gets wet and then the cycle repeats. 
the package says it lasts about six months, but in reality, it's very much dependent on the temperature, the ambient temperature or the temperature of the water that you are using when you, when you water your plants. And, and so in the past, uh, I've heard stories where people put this on their plant and then it got up to 110 degrees. And even though this says that it's supposed to release slowly over six months, the, the, the coating kind of breaks down at high temperatures. I believe that was over 10 years ago, so I'm hoping that Osmocote has fixed the coating on their pellets such that there is no longer that kind of an issue. In any case, it is kind of a set it and forget it kind of solution for bonsai, and that's what makes it really convenient. And even if you don't use it exclusively, it still can be a good part of a fertilizer regimen. Keep in mind that the, the type of soil that we use in bonsai doesn't necessarily act like a standard potting soil, like a peat moss based potting soil. And so you might have nutrients washing out more quickly than you realize. And the solution to that really is to just water at a lower dilution more frequently. If you're uh, just beginning in bonsai, I hope that helped you. And if you use these products, I hope that uh, you can share the results that you have with everybody else in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time. Moss, peat mace based, peat mace, peat mace based potting moss. <laughs>